challenge. Having a challenge and having a novelty. Okay? Stopping the groundhog day can make you happier. Come out of the comfort zone and develop in a natural direction. So sometimes we just do the same things because it's expected to do it. Simply could be your job. You sort of went into that job, life took you into that job, and that's what you do. And then one day you think, why am I doing this? I don't like it. I literally don't particularly like this job. Yeah? But it's because you just developed in that way. And sometimes it takes quite a bit of guts to think, I might see if I can change this. Yeah. Sometimes we have to come out of our comfort zone to do that. Okay. And sometimes we're scared of coming out of our comfort zone. And momentarily, that doesn't make us happy. Yeah. But the stimulation of a challenge in lots of studies is found to actually improve happiness, whether we think it at the time or not. But what it is said is that you need to develop in a natural direction. So for example, even though I'm joking about being in a lift, I'm a bit claustrophobic really, it wouldn't be very good for me to do a leisure activity where I went cave exploring, really. Okay, That's been a bit flippant. But develop in a natural direction, something that your character enables you to do. I've always, you can probably tell, not really had a problem with talking. Okay? And also been very nosy. I've loved being involved with people. So to go on and do occupational therapy was a natural progression. Okay? So looking at challenge and novelty and developing in a natural progression. This might float your boats. <laughs> if this is the challenge that you want and developing in a natural direction, then go forth and do it. Okay. But don't be scared of doing it. Okay. Happy people don't mind failing. Sad people do. You can say it's fun to fail. Um, studies said that the people that are the most entrepreneuring, not entrepreneurship, go, brilliant, there's a crisis coming, now the excitement begins. Don't quite know if we're all into that, okay? But certainly, it's all right to fail sometimes. Because it allows you to do something different. The other thing is, this is my quote. <laughs> this is my it's not in a study, I've just said it today. <laughs> Carey, 2007. Enjoy the journey. All right? Certainly something I say when I'm probably not quite enjoying what I do. You tend to think, oh, it'll be better next week, it'll be better then. You just think, enjoy the journey now. Does that ring true with anybody else? Don't know whether she's quite enjoying the journey. Isn't that just <laughs> Enjoy the journey. <laughs> Mum said, come on and sit in the front, you'll be all right. Don't be such a wuss. <laughs> Mum, I don't want to go up here. And Mom, I think this is Mum, I'm not too sure. Is this Mum or Dad? It's a bit difficult. But, but Mum is actually thinking, this probably journey wasn't that good an idea, right? <laughs> all right? De <laughs> so develop in your natural direction, all right? Mum tells you to go on that big dip and go, no, I want challenge and novelty, but that is not my natural direction and it won't make me happy. Come on. Okay, exactly what you said is a momentary feeling. And it's true, happiness can be that little rush of triumph. That makes sense to anyone? Can anybody remember? A rush of triumph. Keep it clean, please. A rush of triumph. Pardon? Finishing an exam. Finishing an exam. Finishing an exam. That's right. And you've been even better getting your results when you've passed the exam. Yeah? That little rush of triumph. On a simpler note, I had a rush of triumph when my son was in a penalty shootout. 
and we won. Unfortunately, I had that rush of triumph and I went on and I like, yes! Very embarrassing, not done it again, okay? <laughs> but that particular rush of triumph, how can you triumph? How can you get that feeling if you never allow yourself out of that comfort zone? You always do the same thing every day. You always go for the safe route. Those of my patients are scared of going out the house, of doing things. I don't want to go swimming. I, I can't go swimming anymore. I get too tired. I'll never get in the swimming pool. Yeah, I'll look stupid. How do you know that you can enjoy it if you don't do it? How can you triumph if you don't challenge yourself? And how can you triumph if you don't develop? The best to just try and give it a go. Alright. So you didn't get a rush of euphoria, but you did it. And that can give you, if not happiness, a certain sense of smugness. <laughs> smugness happiness? Yeah. I think Enjoy the now. We are obsessed with goals, aren't we? Okay. Western society is obsessed with next week I'm going to do that. Next year I'm going to do that. Yeah. When that wedding comes round, I'll be three stone thinner. <laughs> In a year's time, I'll be doing this. Live in the present. People that are happy. Enjoy the present. They live for the moment. Stop saying this. If only I would be happy. When happens, I'll be happy. Yeah? Be happy now. Be happy with your lot now. And if you're not, challenge yourself to do something different. The arrival fallacy. Does anybody know what the arrival fallacy is? Yeah? It's going, brilliant! Something is happening! Great! I've moved house! And the unhappy people go, oh my god, I've got a massive mortgage now! Yeah? Oh no, I've got to fill my house with furniture, that's so much hassle, I've got to move the gas, I've got to move the electricity. I might not like my neighbours. Yeah? Or, brilliant! I've got a new baby! Oh, I'm going to be up on cost me a fortune. Yeah? The arrival fallacy. Going on holiday. Brilliant! I'm in the middle of Spain, it's gorgeous hot. And I've got a CV balcony. Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I am a bit like that. <laughs> yeah? Okay? So, the arrival fallacy. And we have, a, again, an obsession with goals. Now, the Japanese this is a Japanese model. They don't buy into money this gold business. They believe in what will be, will be. Manyang. What will be, will be. Okay? And they see their life from birth there in the mountains as a water, as a river flowing through. And the little rocks here are a little bit of things that get in your way a bit. Yeah? But those little dips that we have in life. Okay? And going out into the sea is our end of life. So life is a journey and life is to be enjoyed at all times. That's how the Japanese see it. They see the water, okay, as the promise of happiness. The flow of water is the promise of happiness. And the boulders and the rocks are things that you probably need to just nudge out of the way a bit to allow the water to flow through. You can probably sit there yourself and think what's a boulder and what's a rock. Yeah? And probably how you can nudge it slightly out of the way. Yeah? I must tell you that one of our students, this is a model in occupational therapy, and one of our students very unfortunately tried to fit this to a case study. But unfortunately, fitted this to a case with somebody that had bowel problems. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, but the examiners, we just couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> so it made us happy, but not quite what we wanted. Do leisure, okay? Sometimes
sometimes we've forgotten how to have fun as adults. We're stuffy, aren't we, when we become adults? Yeah? I must admit, my husband's a PE teacher. He's great on holiday. I'm doing lots of things. The beach ball, the cricket, running up and down like that, yeah? Where's I like that, my book? Yeah? We sometimes forget how to have fun. Yeah? If you think you've probably forgotten how to have fun, think what you did at 11 years old. You're all going to go and get conkers now, aren't you? <laughs> Think what you did. If it's beating up your brother or sister, probably not that that is a good idea to do. But what you enjoyed then, the simple pleasures in life, you would probably enjoy now. Yeah? Or as you said, sometimes open the curtains. What a lovely day it is. Yeah? The glass half full. So looking at what did I do, what gives me fun. Also, don't rely on other people to tell you what makes you have fun. Yeah? Alright? So actually, oh come on, go on that big dipper, it'll be fun! <laughs> no. <laughs> don't think so. Yeah? Okay. What you think, how do you think you have fun? Fog happiness. By the picture, can you tell me what fog happiness is? It's that dreaded England game, isn't it? Yeah? Some of you from Wales may not be interested. You might have enjoyed watching England play in the World Cup. It was painful, wasn't it? Okay. So we all go, we all go, we'll be really happy and watch England play. We'll go with all our friends, we'll enjoy ourselves. We don't enjoy ourselves at all. Yeah? But after, problems down the line, we go, we giggle, didn't we, watching that in the pub? Fog happiness. You don't realise you're happy until after. Having kids is probably one of those. <laughs> it's not until the 25 that you think, hmm, it's quite nice having that. 